Christmas Day already seems a long time ago. Although in truth, the season of Christmas tide only ends this week with the presentation of our Lord in the temple. That is the day that the crib is taken down from St. Peter's Square in Rome, and from that day, our thoughts will surely shift towards the penances and labours of the holy season of Lent. But since we are still in Christmas tide, I want us to reflect once more upon the joyful birth of our blessed Lord and Saviour 2,020 years ago. Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich, who had visions of the life of our Blessed Mother, tells us that the whole of creation rejoiced at the wondrous birth of our Saviour. On the night that our Lord was born, flowers suddenly came into bloom. Statues of pagan gods in far-off lands crumbled to pieces, and even the wild beasts behaved with incredible peace among each other on that holy night. The invisible God showed himself to the world by embracing human nature. His coming brought peace to men of goodwill. The journey of the three pagan kings to the manger of Bethlehem showed how, at last, fallen humanity could have peace with Almighty God and found and find salvation by entering the one true church, the Catholic Church. But what of the men of bad will, of those countless billions who would decide not to enter the true church or who would choose to leave it? We also see them typified in the story of the first Christmas. We see them in those who refused Mary and Joseph lodgings in Bethlehem. We see them in Herod and his wicked advisers who sought to eliminate Christ to do away with him from their society. The consequence of those men of bad will was the second of our Holy Mother's seven sorrows of her sudden and sorrowful flight into the pagan land of Egypt. And it is upon this mystery, the mystery of the holy flight into Egypt, that I want us to meditate upon today. I'm sure you've all had the experience of having your sleep broken in the middle of the night, of having to get up suddenly to do some sorrowful task, to visit a dying friend, to attend to a sick child, to drive to collect someone who has faced a terrible disaster. Such was the experience of our Blessed Mother and her little family some 2,000 years ago. On that awful night, the Holy Family took the few small possessions they had and began the hundred-mile journey across rough terrain to the pagan land of Egypt. A Holy Mother Mary, O blessed Joseph, so faithful to the will of Almighty God, so prompt in obeying, help me to devoutly consider your holy flight into Egypt and help me to learn from your holy example. Help me to consider your sorrowful journey to this pagan land, to see the ways in which you live there. Show me how far my life fails in mirroring yours, and how sluggish I am in performing the holy will of God. My friends, it is a truth of our Catholic faith that our life on earth is one of exile. In the Hail Holy Queen, which we all say many times each day, we turn our voices to the Blessed Mother saying, To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve, To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. After the first sin of our first parents, Adam and Eve, humanity was justly banished from the Garden of Eden. And if it had not been for Jesus and Mary, we would all, at the end of our lives, most certainly face permanent banishment into the fires of hell. We are born into an exile an exile from the land we were made for, an exile from paradise. But the fact is, when we look at the state of the world, and even of the church, we realise that we are even more in exile than the Holy Family were from the land of of the, the people of God. 
The truth is, we are in a pagan land far more diabolical than ancient Egypt. Here we must raise our families. Here we must try and keep our faith. Here we must find work and become holy. Be convinced of this, my friends. We are truly in a pagan land. A land which slaughters five hundreds of its own babies every day. A land where sodomitical unions are legal, where drunkenness and sexual perversion are glorified, and where false religions are respected, while the true Catholic faith is mocked and denigrated. How are we to survive in this exile? Are you suffering a great deal? The Blessed Mother asked Sister Lucy, the 13th of June, 1917. Do not lose heart. I will never forsake you. My immaculate heart will be your refuge and the way that will lead you to God. O oh, Immaculate Mother, you are with us in this exile, in this land of Egypt. We thank you. We thank you that as we listen to these sermons, as we pray the rosary, as we attend Holy Mass, as we gather with the few faithful Catholics we know, we find this refuge. We find your immaculate heart. We find the secure and safe pathway to lead us to Almighty God. We ask you, Blessed Mother, turn your eyes of mercy towards us. Rescue our families from sinking into the paganism of Egypt. Give us the strength to throw out our televisions, to stop reading worldly newspapers, celebrity magazines, to stop wasting time on the internet. And above all, to despise the wicked behaviour of our fellow countrymen, to keep away from it as if it were a deadly infection. My friends, the Holy Family were not the only Jews exiled to that pagan land of Egypt. Our Lady would have found many people of her religion, but what would have added to the sorrow of her exile was the fact that not all of those Jews would have been keeping themselves clean from the paganism. Some would have gone native. Some would have compromised to the evils around them. Some would have slowly apostatized into the wicked ways of Egypt. My friends, the awful reality that wounds our, our Lady's immaculate heart so deeply today is the fact that Catholics in this country are exactly like, exactly like those faithless Jews of old who lost their souls during the trials of exile. Yes, so many Catholics are more the citizens of Egypt than of the one true church, which alone prom can bring salvation. We need to weep with our Blessed Mother for those people and do our utmost to ensure that our families do not follow those unfortunate Catholics into the damnation which will surely come upon them, engulfed in the pagan ways of the land of exile. We need to increase our ties of friendship with faithful Catholics, because this little company, this little flock, which faithfully prays the rosaries, the many rosaries each day, this little remnant is like those Jews of old who kept their faith during that time of exile. What was their secret? How did they persevere when so many others fell astray? Surely it was by flying to the Holy Virgin of Nazareth, who was there with them in the exile. For this small band of faithful Jews, the Blessed Mother was a more dominant influence in their lives than all the charms of Egypt. Blessed Mother, seat of wisdom, refuge of sinners, teach us how to make our home sanctuaries of your immaculate heart. That beautiful city of refuge, that tower of ivory, that enclosed garden, which is strongly fortified against the bombardments of Egypt. Our mothers with daily rosaries, weekly confession, daily mass. Turn then, most gracious advocate, your eyes of mercy towards us, and after this, our exile 
So Antoine's a blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, her Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.